live from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the Cube Silicon Angles premier live streaming show where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. We are live day two of Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend. Welcoming back a CUBE alumni, Gil Schnorensen, Senior Vice President of VxRail and GM at Dell EMC. Hey Gil. Thank you for having me back. Well, we're excited <laughs> to talk to you. So, looking at some of the announcements that came out today, where Dell EMC says they're the number one market leader in global hyperconverged infrastructure, and you've said that's happened really quickly. Yeah, Tell yeah. us a little bit about that leadership. I think we, um, we found a way to um, take a systems approach to what is otherwise a software defined, defined world. So we found a way to get all of the economical benefits of hyperconverged driven by software, at the same time own the responsibility for those systems to be up and running and lifecycle managed, um, taking away uh, more of the responsibility than customers would have to do it on their own. And I think that recipe has led us to, um, to a leadership position very, very quickly. So, you know, we talked earlier today, can you expand upon some of that responsibility you're alleviating from customers, specifically around SLAs, around I.O., when you software define or software deliver storage, kind of the operating model changes. Can you expand upon that? Yeah, that, that's a very good point. So look at uh, software defined storage technology, for example. We happen to work with vSAN, which is the leading software defined technology. Um, but um, when customers choose to deploy software defined solutions on their own, they're doing something that, that, that they haven't been doing in many, many years, which is take on the responsibility for uptime. And it used to be that storage vendors you know, held responsibility for storage uptime, for, for IOPS, for performance. Um, so I, I think what we're doing is we found the, a, a, the balance between getting all of the benefits of hyperconverged with software defined, but at the same time own the responsibility um, from an operations standpoint to make it more like a traditional architecture and what they know. And that combination is very, very important. So for example, um, the ability to look at the entire system from software to driver to firmware and always deliver a known good package is something that customers would have to do on their own and they're all capable of doing it, but if they could choose not to do it, why not offload it um, to somebody like us and do it, it does it for them. And so, while there are two deployment models, we have a, a very massive growth in the systems approach model, VxRail, VxRack, SDDC, and I think people um, hand off things that they could do, but they choose not to, because they can focus on other things in the IT shop. Um, for example, um, digital transformation and really the path to the multi-cloud by adding more and more layers on top of infrastructure that they can, they can trust. Speaking of multi-cloud, uh, I was in uh, Jeff Clark's opening session this morning, he was talking about a given stat, I think it was 50 plus 56 percent of users surveyed are using more than one cloud. So one of the things I also saw in the press release about um, the advancements to VxRail and, and VxRack, giving customers a clear path to adopt VMware-based multi-clouds. What is that clear path? How is that differentiated? So let's remember that both of those products, VxRail and VxRack SDDC, are products that are built on the VMware stack. They're optimized for VMware users, they're not agnostic to anything, they're really VMware on VMware um, with automation and hardware and packaging that we, we do as a system. Um, by delivering that um, robust infrastructure, and one of the announcements that we made was that we've created the VMware validated design to add the rest of the VMware stack and create an infrastructure as a service environment. That inherently comes with the ability to offload workloads to VMware's service provider, um, cloud, um, cloud service provider, including you know, um, Amazon and Google and the likes, but really a, a very vast network. So you take an infrastructure that's based on VM, VMware and hardened and is, is designed as a system, you add on top of it to a prescriptive VVD exactly how to add the, the layered topics like v, uh, vRealize automation, um, and through that, inherently, you get the entire VMware value proposition 
going from a, a local solution to multi-cloud. And so the, the announcement was that validated design, which is very important. And then the announcement also included all sorts of hardware innovations or, or small evolutions like NVMe drives and 25 gigabit ethernet and higher memory CPUs. All of those are, are just to make sure that the infrastructure itself is ready to support that software stack that ultimately leads them to um, a full IA solution and offloading to, um, to the multi-cloud that are available to them. So big announcement or a big set of education last year at VMworld was VCL, Real File Foundation. It is the foundation of VMware's infrastructure cloud play. Can you help talk through the importance and how VCF differentiates VMware, VxRail, VxRack from competitors? So VCF is a software bundle it's also an orchestrator that allows customers to manage multiple VX, VMware clusters within context. It's called a workload domain, and they can manage those clusters and they can, um, they, they can deploy them, they can lifecycle management, they can micro-segment them with NSX, and they can move workloads between them and into the cloud. VxRack SDC is a system that basically lays down the VCF bits on a system pre-manufactured, and that's how we benefit from uh, VCF as a differentiator. What we've done in addition, we've announced 14G servers to be supported in that architecture. And we've also extended it to a, for example, a dial home on a system level. Um, a lot of serviceability features, a physical view of the servers as part of the graphic user interface. So not only does VCF differentiate um, VMware by having the ability to, to finally leverage the entire stack, our value add is in taking that and adding the physical um, to virtual integration, if you will, like cycle management, um, and serviceability around servicing it all as a system, which makes it a very robust infrastructure. So today, customers have two choices. They can buy a VxRack with VCF on top of it, or they can get to the same outcome with VxRail following a VVD prescriptive. And so what we do is we let them choose. If they're not ready for an NSX deployment, they'd start with one. If they are, they'll start with the other. Either way, the outcome is going to be a full IaaS stack uh, from VMware that can offload to multi-cloud. We just give them choices of how to get there. So I want to kind of play off the value add for a, for a second. We're, we're at this event, the event theme, make it real, making digital transformation real is a mandatory for businesses, right? They have the opportunity to take and apply data to multiple cases, use cases within their organization to, to deliver differentiation. So you talked about a lot of the value add and the choices that you're giving customers from an IT perspective. What are some of the business, when you're sitting down with customers, what are some of the business outcomes they're looking for this technology to help them deliver? So that's a good question. So two levels of, the, uh, of an answer. One is that by getting an automated infrastructure, IT itself can free up cycle to actually implement the you know, IaaS. Um, it also frees up time for those organizations who are embarking on um, native cloud application development. Uh, for example, to deploy um, Pivotal Cloud Foundry on top of VXL, which is another prescriptive reference architecture that we have out there, and allow them to innovate. Um, what I'm most interested in when I visit customers is what workloads they're running on HCI. And, and I ask them and I say, you know, is it, is it testive? Is it mission critical? And I, I, I'm happy to see that by now, HCI and specifically our products have become um, mission critical data centers, so all the way from the core to the edge, um, running banking applications at scale, running trading applications at scale, running manufacturing applications at scale, running ports all over the world. I mean, there's one customer that runs ports with automated trucks um, where the AI that runs those trucks is running on a VX rail. I mean, it's, it's very, very exciting to see how our technology has been adopted into mainstream, um, into mainstream application um, compute. I think that's very exciting. And IT can enable more of those applications run and develop more because they have to do less in managing the physical infrastructure across multi-components. So, Lee Caswell, Senior Vice President of Products over at VMware, brought in their, his customer from Celtic yesterday and validated that. They went all in from a legacy three-tier architecture 
on Dale SE. The, the, they were a Dale customer before, went with VX Rack, I mean, I'm sorry, VX Rail, mission critical applications out the get gate. So I'm seeing a shift. Last year around this time, we were doing education and saying, oh, you know, what is HCI versus a traditional architecture? Are you seeing that same thing at the show as a shift that customers are no longer asking, oh, what is VxRail, VxRack? But that very thing is how can we accelerate digital transformation using VxRail, VxRack? Yeah, look, we have, um, we have a very large percentage of the meetings, in fact, um, almost 200 meetings that were requested to review the technology with us in the show. Well, that's a lot, that shows a lot of interest. Um, th there are a few customers that still don't know, and we've met some of those at the show. Right. There are a few customers who are still um, um, contemplating whether HCI is right for them. And by the way, to those customers, we, we say, don't rush into it, you have choices. If that's what you, if that's what you used to, if the economics were for you, there is no reason to rush into HCI. It's just depending on if you're going to get a better outcome than what you have today. But it's a very common question from customers is, okay, then why do I need traditional storage? And, and, and for somebody from, from my vantage point, um, you'll say, well, there's a lot of bare metal computing out there that requires traditional. Um, but we think that traditional storage becomes more specialized. Um, you know, specific DR use cases, very, um, large ratios between compute and storage that require shared storage, but the HCI um, type of technology is definitely, and, and we see it with market um, growth, right? We, the market's growing at, I don't know, I think it's 60, 70%. We're growing over 150% and taking share in this growing market, um, but we're still very, very small if you compare it to the whole IT TAM. So there, there's a lot of way to go. Partly is, is that we still need to work on the last mile, making sure that our products are uh, uh, more mature, that we, we figure out how to operate them in a real life environment. Um, so there's work to do, but the economical benefits are so strong that customers are making the choice more and more and more, and they trust us to, to, to know how to close the gaps that we still have. Um, and it's a very collaborative effort between our and our customers. You know, we listen. We respond very quickly, and so we can keep um, we can keep the machine going. Sounds like the mo momentum that we talked about with you, I think at VMworld back in eight or nine months ago, continues. And we want to thank you for stopping by the cube, sharing what's new with VX Rack, VX Rail, and how customers can be successful there. Thanks, Absolutely. Gil. Absolutely. Thank you for having me again. We want to thank you for watching the cube. We are live in a concert at Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend. We'll be right back with our next guest after a short break.